loves, welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. I don't know why I said that, so soft-spoken. <laughs> It is Tuesday evening, I have just finished filming the books I want to read in 2020 video. No, 2021. I usually have most of the videos for the month filmed at the very start of the month, but <laughs> I've not been on top of that recently so I'm kind of just filming as I go. I'm hoping at the weekend I can film a little bit more in advance in terms of like the rest of the month's content which would just be a couple of videos but one of them is my bookshelf tour which <laughs> bookshelf tours are just a nightmare to film. <laughs> That's being left to a weekend and then I figured I might as well also film my anticipated releases video on the weekend because I was going to do that today as well but I haven't prepared enough for it with it being anticipated releases rather than books I already have or, you know, books that I know more. Whenever I film one of those videos, I want to first of all put it all in order and then I also feel like I have to have notes about the synopses because they are anticipated releases and I'll know vaguely what they're about but in terms of actually saying a synopsis, I just need more structure. <laughs> so those videos tend to need more organisation and I just hadn't done it yet so have not filmed that tonight but I, I'm okay with that, I can do it at the weekend. This is not what I intended to babble to start off with. <laughs> what I was going to tell you is that I am about to sit and edit the thumbnail for my bookshelf reorganisation video, which is going up tomorrow. Possibly the thumbnail for the one that I've also just filmed because I am going to listen to the audiobook of A Court of Wings and Ruin as I do so. This is a reread before anybody is shocked. <laughs> I did read this when it first came out years ago, whenever that was. But I am going to be doing a live show on Saturday with Madison, Katie and Gavin about this book so I needed a little bit of a refresher but because I do know the story I can listen pretty easily while doing other stuff so I am currently about 140 pages into this. Desperately hoping I can finish this by Saturday. I've been in a very slow going rate when it comes to reading recently so if I manage to get this done by Saturday, I mean I have to get it done by Saturday. That's going to be a little bit of a miracle and I'm hoping that because it's Sarah J Mars, who is one of my favourite authors, that this is going to get me back into reading properly. So fingers crossed for that. But returning to this book after so many years, oh my god is it an experience. It's just... <laughs> it's ironic because I've just read a chapter in which one of the characters just keeps repeating that they feel like they've returned home. And that's what I was thinking about returning to this book. But the context that they were saying it in was a very different context. And honestly, I wish I was in that context, but... <laughs> really enjoying just being back with these characters and in this world. I forgot so much about it already because at the start of this book there's so much manipulation going on and like games in terms of who's trying to trick who and coerce people into what they want which is just so entertaining to read about. So I have been loving that and I'm barely even into it yet so very much excited to continue with that which is what I am about to do so I will pop back in and say hi when I have a little bit more of an update.
morning. It is Friday morning and I had the day off work today which I'm very happy about and I am determined to actually take it as a day off rather than filling it with YouTube work or any other kind of work because it's been a very 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 long time since I've actually just not done anything so the plan for today is just to read enjoy myself <laughs> and I'm about to go out on a walk as you will have seen from yesterday's footage it was snowing and it still is very snowy but today it's also sunny so I don't think the snow will last for too much longer unless it snows again but I'm gonna go out for a walk back in the woodlands and then I'm going to come home get all nice and cozy again and do some reading I'm so excited just to not do anything but read. I really haven't been reading so far this year so I'm hoping that I can get back into the swing of things and I don't know get things kickstarted because we're like two weeks in and I haven't finished anything so I'm halfway through like five books I just need to actually finish something. <laughs> My hair really said volume is key, huh? <laughs> oh my god, stop it. Can we have some restraint? No. Can we have some restraint, please? Just where? Whatever. I completely forgot to give any kind of reading update throughout today, but I did finally managed to finish a book, that being this poetry collection, which is Otherwise by Nicoletta Arbia. She did send me this for review, which was very kind for her and I took my sweet time reading it. <laughs> but this is a collection of Greek myth retellings via poetry. Now you guys will know that I'm not that huge of a poetry fan in terms of the form, but I did end up rating this one somewhere around 3.5 to a 4 star. I haven't quite decided yet because I'm trying to separate what's just my own preference in terms of the form of poetry versus the actual content of the book. So what I can say is that I did enjoy reading it and the fact that it was the topic of mythology and retellings, I do think it lends itself quite nicely to this format. And I think this would actually be a really great introduction to people who want to get into mythology retellings because each of the sections in this is split into five different women. They all come with a kind of story synopsis beforehand. So you go into each poem knowing what is happening so it's not the sort of thing where you're trying to decipher all these metaphors or anything and it's really not too difficult to actually read in terms of that it's not like overly metaphorical and you have to translate it as you go which I really appreciated because I just don't like that form of poetry at all. There was a certain point where I struggled to keep up with whose perspective we were following because I think this was specifically in the Ariadne section and I would have to wait until they referred to one another to know whose perspective I was following which was really strange <laughs> but otherwise I <laughs> but <laughs> but I do think this lends itself quite nicely to this whole trend of restoring the voices of women in ancient Greek mythology especially because we have five different stories and see quite a lot within them like they're all lengthy stories but not because it's poetry so you get quite a long time frame within the stories and cover the entire story within the space of the small book. So would recommend if you're looking for a Greek myth retelling that is something a little bit different to the ones that you might have seen before. And then 
I have read up to around page 400 in my reread of A Court of Wings and Ruin. Slightly worried because I do still have like 300 pages left I think it is and I need this finished before 11 p.m tomorrow which doesn't sound like a problem apart from tomorrow I need to film my bookshelf tour and also my anticipated reads video both of which take longer than the standard video to film so tomorrow is looking pretty full I think the audiobook has about five hours left or something so I'm a little bit concerned we'll see what we can do that's, that's all I can do. Um, really, 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 really loving my reread of this though. It's so comforting to me, even though it's painful at the same time. And I haven't even gotten to the painful parts yet, so. <laughs> Just being with these characters feels so familiar and I've actually forgotten more than I realized. I think I said that in my last vlog, but there's lots of details which I just completely forgot. So it's nice to return to it and just kind of be like, oh yeah, that's why I've ended up loving these characters so much because there's lots of, you know, small interactions or moments which I've just forgotten. And I know that once upon a time when I read this for the first time, that would have built up into me adoring each and every one of these characters, especially because the relationships are also complicated. And I think, well, I've always said that the characters are Sarah J Maas has strong points in all of her books, so just seeing them again is so familiar and comforting and I love it. I do feel like I'm getting through it pretty quickly because I have only picked this up twice and I'm 400 pages into it, which, you know, is pretty good going for me. In fact, it's more than pretty good going because I don't think, I feel like my average pages per day count for about at least six months has been about 30 pages. It's been very, very low. <laughs> So to have read 200 pages each time I've picked this up is really, really good. <laughs> Let's see if I can manage 300 tomorrow, eh? <laughs> like I said, I am listening to the audiobook, so hopefully there are things I can do throughout my day and have it on in the background so that it's not just like five hour block. But we shall see how it goes. I have really enjoyed my day off today. There have been quite a few different times <laughs> throughout the day where I had to tell myself not to do things because I was adamant that I would take today as an actual day off and you know I'm trying to train myself into actually being able to relax again and being able to sit and read and things because I've just not been able to since I started university like four years ago now so <laughs> it sounds ridiculous having to train yourself to relax but it's a genuine thing I just want to be able to actually sit and read again because I keep seeing all of my friends or like just anybody online reading so many books and I know it seems like I read a lot of books but it's just this idea of like finishing work for the day and then just being able to you know have food sit and watch something and then sit and read before bed I can't do that I just can't <laughs> my brain just doesn't like stopping so I'm trying to train myself into being okay with that so I've been trying to train myself into just so I am trying to train myself into just being like this is fine, which ended up being a large purpose of today's break since I no longer have essays to write. Did I ever mention that in a vlog? I don't think I did. Big news, which I just forgot to mention because I mentioned it on Twitter, but you know, maybe not all of you follow me on Twitter, but I dropped out of uni. Yeah, um, I was doing a master's degree and Nope, wasn't working. I'm not, I'm honestly, I'm not going to go into it because it could be its whole entire video and I don't know how to talk about it in shorter terms. <laughs> I will say that I really struggled with it because I put basically anything I value in myself is inherently tied with academia. So to literally make the decision to tear that away from myself has brought up all kinds of feelings and mental health problems and just so many things. This is why I'm saying like it could be its own entire video, both because of the reasons I've left, because of the just general approach to academia and how people treat it and then the personal effects it's had on me in the decision to leave. But what I will say is that even though I've been struggling with that, I feel like actually I don't even really need to say it because I feel like you'll be able to tell just from me vlogging today that I am feeling so much better for it. Even though my brain is just being as nasty as can possibly be, I know that that's illogical. I'm continuing to fight that down. I am getting help with it. And the sheer relief that is starting to set in 
as my brain actually processes the fact that I don't have to do essays, I don't have to do uni reading. All of that anxiety and stress has just gone and my brain is processing that very very slowly because the immensity of it is just, it's a lot. But I feel like you can tell. I feel like you can tell. I don't know, you might not be able to, but I just feel a bit more alive. <laughs> That's that. I'm not a uni student anymore. I peaced out and said goodbye. I'm gonna go do what I'm actually enjoying doing and what is equally as successful. And you know, the stuff that isn't going to kill my soul slowly. So yes, I am going to go and try and sleep because what time are we on? It's like 3 a.m. again. It's exactly 3 a.m. Wow. One thing that is a continuing endeavor is me trying to rein in the insomnia, the sleeping pattern, I don't know, because ever since November, it was a very distinct starting point and that was when I started uni. <laughs> since November onwards, there's only been maybe two or three nights in which I have slept before 4 a.m. Don't know why it's 4 a.m. My brain just decided one night that that was the time that we were going to go to sleep at, largely because of the amount of work and stress and anxiety and yada yada that has been going on. But because it's been going on for so long and because it's not quite processing that everything is fine now, and I'm sure a whole host of other reasons too, it's taken me a good long while to try and um, rein that back in. So I'm usually awake at ridiculous times in the morning, but I've never been one of those people who stresses about not being able to sleep because if I can't sleep, then I'll just do something else. I'm generally quite used to feeling tired throughout my day for multiple reasons. So if I'm tired because I've lacked sleep, it doesn't really feel all too different for me, but even before that was a thing, or even if I feel more sleepy than usual, I just don't really see it as a problem because all I will think is, well, that means I'm gonna get a good night's sleep the next time I try. So for some reason, that's one thing that generally stresses people out that my brain just doesn't worry about. So <laughs> even though I've been falling asleep at 4 a.m. every night and then getting up at eight for work, haven't been worrying about it. I'm just kind of like, eh, it'll sort itself out eventually. <laughs> Yes, I'm going to stop babbling and get ready for bed because I am actually pretty sleepy now, so yeah. Hello, hello! It is now Sunday evening and I completely forgot to vlog most of the weekend. <laughs> so, big update. I managed to finish A Court of Wings and Ruin in time for the live show. I read like 300 pages yesterday, which was ridiculous. But because I was reading for so long, I got really into the story and <laughs> I ended up crying towards the end even though I knew what was going to happen and knew how it ended. For some reason I still cried. I am actually really glad that I was asked to do that live show with Madison and Katie because I don't think I would have reread it had I not been doing that. But I do actually really appreciate the fact that I did reread it because there was just so much like minor details, so many minor details rather, that I had just completely forgotten and with A Court of Silver Flames coming out soon I really appreciated the refresher and I feel like I'm going into A Court of Silver Flames with a much more steady ground. I do actually still need to read A Court of Frost and Starlight. I haven't read that one, like at all. <laughs> no idea why. So I'm hoping I can fit that in somewhere pretty soon, but I'm just happy that I managed to read something and now I feel really motivated to actually finish quite a few of the books that I've got on the go because I did have five that I was currently reading at one point. I've managed to get rid of two this week because I finished reading Otherwise and A Court of Wings and Ruin. So what I'm about to do is see if I can finish reading The Power of Hades. This one is a fantasy romance Greek myth retelling between Hades and Persephone. Persephone at the point that we start this book is a human girl who is living in New York and she gets kidnapped by Zeus, taken to the underworld to take part in the Hades trials. So the Hades trials are basically set up so that people can compete to become the queen of the underworld, to become his wife. However, of course, Persephone has already been his wife, but for some reason, nobody can remember who she is besides the gods themselves. She can't remember her past. So there's this whole mystery behind why she was kicked out, why everybody was forced to, you know, forget her existence. And as well as that, the tension between her and Hades because she doesn't know what's going on he's trying to get rid of her, nobody thinks that she should be in the underworld and the only reason she is there is because Zeus is a bit of an arsehole really and just decided to 
make a bit of a mess because he was bored. So I'm actually really enjoying it. I'm only about 90 pages in, but it is only 190 pages. So I have about 100 pages left, but I'm really enjoying the trial aspect of it. And this whole like mystery behind why her entire existence was forgotten. I'm so intrigued by that. I need to know what happened. We haven't really gotten too much of the romance part yet. Oh my God, there is <laughs> definitely not romance, but it just reminded me because there's this one part where Dionysus gives her something to guard her, basically. It's meant to be the intention, but he ends up assigning what they call a randy sprite to her, <laughs> which is just like this tiny gnome-like creature who is just bare naked and <laughs> keeps dancing in a very particular ways that make her feel uncomfortable and she's just like, stop. <laughs> and I, I was reading that actually during a reading sprint. I had myself on mute, but if I wasn't on mute, everybody would have just heard me wheezing because I just wasn't expecting it and it really took me by surprise and I just found it hilarious so I'm just there wheezing to myself on this live stream. So that was fun. <laughs> but live streams, I have so many of them coming up and just in progress. I think I've got live streams pretty much back to back from now up until like March. It's ridiculous. There might be one or two weeks in which I don't have one, but that's like at the minute, that could change. <laughs> but actually there is going to be a read and sprint live stream with myself, Becca and Gavin on Tuesday, if you're watching this when it goes up or even before it happens. So on Tuesday, 9 p.m. GMT, we are doing read and sprints if you want to come and join us because myself and Gavin have not been too great at reading. I don't think Gavin's read anything for like a week. I have only just started reading things. So we're gonna do read and sprints to hold us accountable to that and Becca is gonna make us read. <laughs> so I'll leave a link to that down in the description box. You can set yourself a reminder or, you know, join when you want to. Um, and then I think all the other ones are things like live shows for authors, for instance, or book clubs. So I am actually going to be part of Faro Feb, which is a fantasy romance February event and readathon. So you do have prompts, but they are also doing events with like interviews with different authors who are fantasy romance authors. Jennifer Larmantrout's part of it. And I'm going to be interviewing Emma Ham, which I'm so excited about because I've been meaning to read her books for so long. She writes fantasy romance books, obviously, self-published. And I think all of them, or like the vast majority of them are retellings. So you have Greek myth retellings, you have fairy tale retellings, just so many. And I've been so, so excited. I'm nervous, really scared, <laughs> but that will be happening on the 21st of February. Again, I'll leave information down in the description box. So you will be seeing me reading some Emma Ham books over the course of the next month. I do actually, I have started one because apparently I'm very good at starting books, but not finishing them at the minute. <laughs> But I did start reading Of Goblins and Gold, which is her most recent one and the one which she will be featuring at the event. I am literally about 20 pages into it. I started this when I finished reading A Court of Wings and Bruin and then I remembered that I still had The Power of Hades on the go. So that's why I haven't gotten too far in this one yet because I'm gonna go and finish the Hades one right now and then I can jump into that one properly. So that's happening. I will have a Patreon live show towards the end of January. There are book club live shows for things like Elder Lingalong, Bonathon. There's just a lot happening. So you're going to be seeing a lot of my face in the next couple of months. <laughs> but anyway, this is not what I'm meant to be babbling on about. I just wanted to check in and let you know that I am going to go and try and finish the Power of Hades before the end of this vlog. I am on a bit of a time limit in terms of being able to get this vlog up properly because it's currently like 11 p.m. So I am going to attempt to finish reading a book and edit this video to set it to upload. And I could really do with the shower, but I might leave that until tomorrow morning. So I'm on a bit of a time limit. So I'm gonna shut up and just go and do things. <laughs> I did it. I did it. It is, what time are we on? It is 20 past 12, 20 past midnight. And I finished reading The Power of Hades. I rated it four stars. I really enjoyed it. It actually cut off earlier than I thought it would, but with it being a short book and it having more installments afterwards, the actual trial part of the story doesn't end with book one. Because there are nine trials, so there's different rounds. So three trials in each round. And yeah, I just really enjoyed it actually. And there's like enough of a mystery left to want me to read the next book. There's enough intrigue behind each trial to see how it goes and just keep me interested in that because it's not 
Like there's a lot of books which have trial situations and these ones are all very different. They're all testing a very different thing and it's not always like clean cut everything's gonna go perfectly right. So I'm actually really enjoying it. I do wish that there was more romance in this one because that is what I went into it thinking it was, but also it's kind of understandable that it's not. And I do think that it is a really good pace. So I just need to read the next book to get all that. <laughs> but with that being said and done, I finished three books in three days. Obviously I didn't read the entirety of them in those days, but to finish them all back to back feels pretty good feel like I might slowly be getting back into reading. So with that being said, I will end this vlog here so that I can go and edit it in time for you guys to watch it tomorrow. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then remember to leave a like and a comment so let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already, then please consider doing so. Down in the description box, you'll find information to everything I mentioned in this video, all of my social media and other bookish stuff as well. So be sure to go and check that out if you haven't already. But for now, I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye.